Here's Gilgis Alexander. McCollum staying with him. Spins, gets inside. Left handed off the glass. Oh, what a sweet move. Giddy, tough spot. Back door. What a pass. What a play. And J Dub picks the pocket of Trey Young. He'll take it himself. This is Luke Dart. You're listening to the Uncontested. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Uncontested Weekly Show, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and proudly sponsored by Dave's Hot Chicken and Spark OKC. I'm your host on this Wednesday evening, J.D. Silva, joined by some fellows. First one being Jacob Niffin. What's up? And then we got, who am I going to say here? Who am I going to say? Taylor Peterson. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Where's the Thunder's Malachi Flynn when we need him? I know. And last but not least, Nick Crane. Feels like last and least. Let's move on. (laughs) Uh, Before we get into covering this 35-point loss, you guys are antsy in the chat for us to cover a 35-point loss, by the way. The degenerates. I know. Uh, Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating if you have not done so already. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And last but not least, Jacob, what are we doing Friday? I was afraid you were going to forget again, J.D. Not this time. Two days from now, folks, hopefully the return of SGA and J-Dub. Come hang out with us at Dave's Hot Chicken in Bricktown, downtown OKC, as we host the official uncontested watch party. Game tips at 6 p.m. You show up. You tell them, hey, I'm here for the watch party. Bam, 15% off your food. Now, see, some people hear 15% off your food and they think, man, I could go order my normal meal and save 15% of my money. That's not the way to look at it, folks. You got to look at it as I can order 15% more food at my normal cost. So go get you some extra Dave's hot chicken. Come hang out with us. Come hang out with us. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have some giveaways. Uh, we're, we have uh, like some keychains and some stickers and just a whole bunch of really cool, like little uh, uh, Silva, what did I call it the other day? Party favors. Yeah. I don't like that word. <laughs> I have a funny story about that. But No, uh, no, 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 no. Let's not. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've offered this in the past and few have taken me up on it, but I'm so serious. Party favors? No, 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 no. no. For these events. Um, if you're going and I encourage you to go, I cannot go. So I have like FOMO. So the first five of you that hit me up and say, Hey, I'm going to the watch party. I'll buy your first beer. First five to hit me up on what me. a guy. No cash app, Apple pay, PayPal. What else are the kids using these days? I don't know, but cash will, app. I'll buy your first beer. Pacifico salt and lime is Bitcoin. on ground. Phenomenal. Hey, if you hit up Nick for the free beer, and you get it at Dave's, come up to us so we can get all the free beer in one picture in front yes. of the big uncontested backdrop. Yes, please. Be dope. You could come out. You could try some uh, Reaper chicken, if you uh, if you so dare. You can get some cheese on your fries. You can have a good time. Watch the Thunder get back to their winning ways against the Indiana Pacers. Hang out with all of us, and we'll have a live pod at the end of the evening. And then it's only like 9 o'clock by the time the live pod's done. And you're already in Bricktown. You can go catch a movie. Uh, you can go get some dessert. You can go to a bar. You can go home if you want. Tons of stuff. I'm in the river. Do. You can go to the river. You can go swim in the river if they win by enough. Or if they lose by. <laughs> how much, how much they will they not lose. Tonight? They haven't lost three straight all year. How much They're not they starting to win by for you to jump in the river, Jacob? Give us a number. 50. 50. 
50. And it have so, to be like a Chet triple double. No, 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 no. We're, we're not, no, no, no. We're not adding things to it. If the Oklahoma 50 City point wins, win, by 50 I would jump in the river walk. Okay. Deal. <laughs> hey, 50 point playoffs. win with a Chet 30 piece triple double. I will jump off the overpass <laughs> into the river walk. <laughs> Naked. Head first. Not naked. Uh, nobody wants to see that. But head first. That's a crime. Head first. It's very shallow. I don't recommend that. Yeah, I don't want to remember it. A <laughs> couple of uh, playoff wins in OKC, and I won't be far from taking a dive into the river walk. Just a couple? That would tell it. They win game one and two? <laughs> so of us can be hey, I fell into the canal at Scissor Tail Park once. You what? Fell into the canal. Oh, God, I got an Amber Alert. <laughs> oh, so Thunder offense is missing. <laughs> Bearded man uh, jumps into the uh, <laughs> the river. Is that Morty that jumps into the river? <laughs> um, I we're we're beating around the bush here, uh, trying to avoid talking about this loss. But I was talking to my mom about playoff tickets the other day. We we split tickets, and uh, she said to me, "Well, we might have to buy some extra ones because I want to be there when they win." My mom's probably listening to this episode, and I was like. What, like when they win like game one or something? No, like the championship. Okay. <laughs> yes. Like the first round first. Like the first round is going to be an absolute like knife fight. Yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, you know what? It was not a knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great knife transition. Against the Celtics. <laughs> what kind of fight was it, JD? A fight where a crowd embossed booed a couple of white men on the other team <laughs> you jacob and i think silva too maybe taylor are all big like movie people especially when it comes to like medieval game of thrones lord of the rings How, give me give me a battle or a fight from a movie where it felt one-sided like it was tonight oh i've got a good answer here top five <laughs> massacres in film <laughs> <laughs> it was a good fight like the, the game was close and it was a good game until the end. So let's go like the Battle of Helm's Deep at Lord of the Rings. The Yorks are winning, but the humans are fighting back. And then Gandalf shows up in the fourth quarter and just blitzes the absolute dog shit out of him. And it's a massacre. <laughs> That's what, what that means. I, I was just envi envisioning the And Nick, you like Game of Thrones. You watch Game of Thrones with us. Yeah, uh, but I don't, I don't have all the detail of the families so, and the people. Jon Snow, the gif, the infamous gif of Jon Snow, you know, going one on gazillion and uh battle of the bastards when he, uh, <laughs> he takes a sword out yeah, it's being charged that, yeah. yep there's a few uh, bastards in this game so that was a uh, josh giddy versus Celtics yeah. tonight isn't that crazy that like gosh. like isn't it crazy that like the last few games without dub and shay it's like man gotta get josh out there for 40 minutes so somebody can do something i tweeted last night from the account like i think it was the last two minutes of the game Mark needs to call timeout or do something to get Giddy into the game because there's no game stoppage. Yeah, yeah it, it is uh, very wild to think about. It's a great it's thing. It's a very great thing. Yeah, so the final score of this game, 135 to 100. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was closer, it was closer than that. Shocked they broke 100. Yeah, it was, it was closer than that for a large portion of this game, but uh, at a certain point, you know, the, the floodgates opened for, uh, for Boston, and OKC just could not keep up at a certain point. Obviously, with SGA and Jada being out, it's hard to beat like the a uh, top two team in the NBA. So, uh, <laughs> boys, where should we start for any big themes, takeaways? I think the big theme tonight for me is fight. Like we just talked about battles. Like th this game was a fight. You take everything into context, right? It's late in the season. One of your starters is a rookie who looks completely gassed, is on pace to pay, play all 82. Another one of your starters tonight is your other rookie who's on pace to play all 82. You played 22 hours ago in a different city. You are down clearly your two best players. You are coming to on the road to the best team in the league who is playing for their 60th win and to clinch home court advantage throughout the entirety of the playoffs. So they did have something to play for. You ended the first half shooting two of 15 from three. There was a stretch in the first half where you were one of 16 from the field. And late in the third quarter, it's a two-possession basketball game. 
Like they, as frustrating as the game was, as like annoying as it was that they couldn't hit shots and there were some lapses here and there. Silva, this was a knife fight. Like the Thunder carved out a shank and like they sharpened down a spoon and they came in here and they were trying to gut everybody. And yeah. ultimately it didn't work. The fourth quarter is 42 to 17. Yeah. Like that is the fourth quarter of a Sega Baba against the best team in the league. Your legs are shot. Your closers aren't there. And Boston just gets crazy hot. But they went into the fourth quarter only down 10. And and not even the best team in the league. The best team, best regular season team since maybe the Warriors that won 73. Yeah. That's like, I mean, like really good. Nick, you sent us the, the message today. The gap between one and two in the East is bigger than the gap of between one and 10 in the West, yeah. which is absurd. That's yeah. absurd. It's and you can add on the Celtics being incredibly good at home as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, I like that you mentioned healthy. nobody missed the game tonight for them. Yeah, right. I like that you mentioned the fourth quarter uh, scoring discrepancy there, Jacob, because one screenshot that I took, or actually it's a picture I took, uh, the broadcast, I, t- I turned over to Bally about midway through the first quarter because I just couldn't with the national media tonight with no Shea or Dub. Uh, the first what are you quarter. Talking about? Thunder, JJ Reddick was wonderful. JJ's awesome. JJ's sick. I love JJ. Um, but now the, the NBA today folks are a different oh my story. God, dude. Correct. It's like bad. TNT's pregame and halftime broadcast is like 10 X better. Totally agree. I couldn't go over to Bally because if I heard the Laney Wilson commercial one more time, I was going to, <laughs> hey, there was not much of that. I was uh, shocked. Recreate as, Kurt Cobain. As you know? somebody, somebody that lives ESPN. in Texas that does not get to ever listen to the, the thunder broadcast. I have no, count your blessings. My about. guy, I, you always tweet about it and I have no clue what you're talking Dude, about. Nick, again, we're just, uh, Delaying the inevitable of breaking down this game here, but right head right now, Jacob but, Nick, and our let friend Carrie. I'll, I'll tell you how bad game. it is, Nick. If you told me my option is to rewatch the commercials of the past ten Thunder games on Bally Sports commercials only, nonstop, or dive into the Riverwalk during the winter when they drain it, <laughs> I'm climbing to the top of the Omni Hotel. Oh my god! Yeah, it's a uh, and we were at the Blue Game with Carrie. It, it literally played like probably five different times in like a 30 minute period. It was terrible. On we the, day the blue game with Carrie. Uh, for a, a very special meeting we had with the Thunder, too. Uh, oh, and we have yes, some things yes, to tease yes, yes, moving yes, forward. Yes, 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 a lot yes, of exciting stuff yes, coming yes, up yes. for the playoffs. I'm with you. Back on track. First quarter, the Celtics had 30 points to the Thunder's 23. Second quarter, the Thunder, or sorry, the Thunder were outscored by seven. Uh, but that third quarter, they outscored the Celtics by four. That third quarter resiliency was something really, really impressive. It's something we've talked so much about this team throughout the majority of the season. <laughs> Fourth quarter was ugly, <laughs> like Jacob mentioned. But the fact that this team is able to respond like that, even without Dub or Shea, on the second night of a back-to-back, given all the circumstances we already have covered, it's really promising. And it's hard not to think that if you had even just J-Dub in there, uh, and maybe even like a 50% Shea like we saw against the Knicks, that they wouldn't have won, if not one of these past two games, last night and tonight, both of them. Yeah, I like my big takeaway, and this is not meant to be like a slight at the Thunder or the roster construction because it's phenomenal. Um, I don't know if there's a team in the league that their scheme and system is so predicated on one or two guys that it just doesn't work when they don't play. Like, the Thunder, and, and that's that's part of being an unorthodox team, is the Thunder are going against the let's hoist a bunch of threes, let's do what the Warriors did to be good. Um, they've they're very much like the drive and kick. They are the attack the rim, put pressure. Top two guys are going to draw gravity. Guys like Isaiah Joe are going to get open threes. And when you don't have Shea and Dub, like it just doesn't work. Like they've built the perfect roster around Shanda with play finisher. I tweeted this night. Play finishers is what Oklahoma City's entire roster is. And when those two guys aren't playing and you've got a whole roster of play finishers, but no playmakers, no facilitators, nobody can set the table at a very, very, very high level. Like I'm not saying that like Casey Wallace can't pass or um, Josh Giddy can't pass, like, but a true facilitator 
self-creator that draws gravity and gets everybody else open looks when you don't have that and you just have a bunch of play finishers it just doesn't work like the offense has been so stagnant these last two games and, and what you see the trend both nights is when the other team's not scoring at a high level like they kind of stick in it like it's a back and forth it's 10 points it's seven it's five it's 10 it's eight it's six like they kind of hang in there but as soon as the other team goes on a run they just don't have the firepower to stick in it like it just doesn't work I think you hit the nail on the head, Nick, with the point of they don't have any self-creators outside of those two. They have a lot of guys who can get there, but aren't there yet. Like, I think Kaysen will be able to self-create pretty well in the next few years. Chet, like, already does it, like, really well for a rookie, but you give him, like, three or four years, he'll be a really good self-creator. When you're missing those guys that can self-create and break down their own guy, draw the help, and then that's what gets that ball pinging in those cuts more on point because the defense is in rotation. They just have a hard time getting the defense to rotate because they don't have somebody who can break down the guy in front of them and get the defense to shift. And I think that's really been on display. For what it's worth, like they arguably should have won the Sixers game. Right, like they were right there. They also had three great looks to tie it at the buzzer and couldn't get them to go. Like they arguably should have won that game. Um, tonight, again, they just kind of ran out of gas. But even with kind of the deficiencies, whenever you're missing your two best players, which any team in the league misses their two best players, you're going to struggle. I think it's like I took something positive out of those two. We're way too late in the season for moral victories. But I took something positive out of those two. Uh, by the way, some of the role players stepped up. I honestly think we kind of learned a lot about this team in the past two days uh, without those guys. I think we learned some good. For me, I, I learned that uh, Aaron, like Aaron Wiggins, obviously has been good all season, but him playing a, a, a little bit more of that creator role, especially early on in this game tonight, really good. Casey Wallace was doing a lot more offensively. Um, Lou Dort. We kind of have seen what Lou looks like when he goes back to having a larger offensive load a little bit. And so we've been getting the more inefficient Dort. We've been seeing a lot more Jay Will, Kenrich Williams, guys that have kind of been in a funk at different points of the season. I think they've been better, Kenrich especially. Jacob, you said we learned some stuff. Do you think now is a good time to talk about what we've learned with uh, Presti's main uh, acquisition at the trade deadline, Gordon Hayward? I've, I've, <laughs> I'm not, I've not learned anything good about him necessarily. Uh, Nick, Nick, you're, you're muted. muted. Damn it. Yes, we talk about it. Uh, but I, can, can we caveat this? Can we yes. caveat this conversation with, um, I think it's pretty clear, based on um, the last week or so with how conservative the Thunder has been with injuries. And that's, that's always been the case with this team. Medical staff kind of leans conservative. Um, I, I don't get the sense this team cares all that much about which seed in the top three they get like this is a team that's like it's house money um you could be one and get dealt a crap hand in the first round like this team could be the three seed and everyone could be like oh my gosh how they they, they fell to three they didn't get one and the matchup may actually be better i don't think the team cares a lot much about the seeding in the same respect i think at the deadline oklahoma city took the same approach where it was like we're not going to make a splash with a massive trade. We're going to take a flyer on a guy like Gordon Hayward that could be really good for this team. But if he's not, you got the big expiring money, right? So before we talk about Gordon Hayward, cause I'm sure it's going to be a lot of negative. I just wanted to point that out. Like, yes, it was the trade deadline acquisition, but I don't think this team uh, knowing that their best chance at winning it all is not this year. It's in the future. I, I think this was a a safe, secure, hedged move, and we're seeing the absolute worst it could be, and that's okay. So I want to say really, later. really glad you brought that up, and I want to go ahead and pull up our first question of the night from Texan by Nature eighty eight. Do you all think we're avoiding teams in the playoffs or just resting our players? And Nick, this was a thought that I've had, I've been tweeting about over the past couple of days. Um, this is why we saw Lenny Waters being called up before the Blues' first playoff game that they, they obviously would have wanted Lenny to be there for. I knew right then that probably Dub and Shea both were going to be set because I think you're exactly right. The Thunder could care less. To, to answer uh, Texan by Nature 88's question, 
I think the Thunder could care less about sitting at this point, considering they essentially have a top three seed locked up in the West. It's more so getting those guys healthy, being completely healthy, heading into the playoffs, because we've seen what this team can do and how they look like or what they look like when they are fully healthy. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up. I think that's a good point, but also good context for the Hayward conversation that we'll get into. Yeah, this this was the time to learn what Gordon Hayward could bring to the table, I think, because previously, like when SGA and Dub were healthy, it was more like, OK, well, he's just he's clearly just choosing to take a back seat, And he is kind of playing, trying to learn how to be a role player. Well, now when when like really could have helped vintage like a vintage Gordon Hayward really could have helped tonight. You know, a former all star could have really helped tonight if he kind of spread his wings and did what he what he did in December. JD, and, when you say vintage Gordon Hayward, yeah. We're not talking like we need pre injury Gordon Hayward, like Boston injury. Earlier we're talking season. like you need Gordon Hayward from literally four months ago, Gordon Hayward. Yeah. Correct. I mean, Charlotte Gordon Hayward this season was like twenty five and five. Yeah. The dude tonight was what? Say it again. He was what? Like he had nights where he'd get like twenty five and five for oh, Charlotte this year. Yeah, I thought you were saying his average. I was like, no, no. <laughs> he, I mean, he would have nights of twenty yeah, yeah, plus. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yes. Right. Completely agree. Completely agree. He played eighteen minutes tonight. Was a minus twenty eight. Um, which the plus minus doesn't really mean anything because you lost by thirty five. But took four shots. Whenever he, and that's in 18 minutes. Whenever he was at 15 minutes, he had taken two shots, which means he got up two garbage time shots. Yeah. Be like, I'm going to sound like a jackass, and I'm fully prepared to be the jackass of the show. Hey, it's Wednesday night. Say what you want. Like, <laughs> people joke all the time, like, oh, man, if they'd give me NBA minutes, I could give uh, Brian Scalabrini buckets, or, you know, and, and it's just all bullshit. I can get up more than four shots in 18 minutes in an, in an NBA game. You throw me out there tonight, I promise you I can get four shots up. That's because people are going to leave me open. Like, there is zero level of aggression from this guy. I am, and I was, I think, the biggest proponent on the podcast, like pumping the Gordon Hayward trade and give it some time. I think part of what you learned over these past two games, Gordon Hayward in my opinion, does not need to touch the basketball court during the playoffs. You have your bench rotation of Cason Wallace, Isaiah Joe, Aaron Wiggins, Kenrich Williams, and Jay Will. And those should be your five bench guys. If it were Gordon Hayward's a 24-year-old uh, who was brought in with the organization they have a lot of belief in, and it's a growing, um, and, and it's part of his development and whatever, and you don't want to damage his confidence, makes total sense to give him more minutes. In reality, like you don't know this guy anything. Like, he's going to walk this summer because he's a free agent. I don't see any way you bring him back. I, I, I don't know what the value would be there at all. Like I don't know why you would spend money to bring him back. It's not like he's in some sort of development stage. Like I, I do not see any value in playing him minutes moving forward or in the playoffs one of the two games when you're missing your two best scorers and playmakers, he comes in and can't even get shots up. <laughs> it's not even can't. It's like won't. Like sure. I think his biggest contribution has been being the fifth guy on the court, so you don't get whistled for only having four guys on the court. Short memory, though. I think. I mean, I, I agree with you. At this stage, I don't see a world where he gets another contract in OKC. Um, playoffs are weird, man. There's players every year that just like flip a switch or they work better or something happens. Um, I'm not saying I am sitting here believing Gordon Hayward is going to be a difference maker in the playoffs. I'm just not, I'm not fully counting out the fact that there's not an opportunity to turn things around. I'm not saying average 15 or do the 25, five, like you mentioned, but at least be impactful off the bench. A, a series, a series is, is, you know, four to seven games. And, if if in one series he gives you twelve and four and is like your eighth best player, has he scored twelve points for this team yet? No, but again, playoffs is completely different. For sure, I would yeah. be way more shocked if he took five shots in a playoff game than if he never touched the court um, 
after what is it like April 15th or whatever's last game of the season? The minutes feel very forced from Dignall trying to get him into rhythm. And again, these past two games without Dub and Shea really kind of shed light on that. Uh, this was sent to me from Donnie Hazelwood. He's in a four game stretch from November 30th to December 8th. This is obviously pre injury Hayward. Hayward scored 90 points in that four game stretch. Since then, with the Thunder in a 21 game stretch for OKC since he's been active, he's scored 97 points total. That's more than I thought. That seems way more than I thought. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, he plays like he takes eight melatonin before he laces up. I don't like if he's going to stop doing that. Don't take melatonin. Don't take Benadryl before you lace up in the playoffs. And then maybe you'll put up some shots. But it's brutal. It it, it could happen. He doesn't, want to, he doesn't want to go up at the rim. I have zero percent confidence that anything will change. Like has uh, I think his most impactful game as a member of this team came last week in the home loss against the Rockets. That first game that yeah. Shea sat. Um, three of three from three uh, in the first quarter. That, that was, to me, by like he is not an impactful basketball player. You put Kaysen in there, he can impact the game. You put Kenny in there, Kenny can impact the game. I think yeah. Jay Will has made like marked improvement and really does a lot of stuff really nicely. Every time Hayward checks into the game and then checks back out, I feel like zero impact has been made. Yeah, it's a... It's a... Very clear post, whether it's post calf injury or whether it's like now that you're playing games of consequence, his his explosiveness and ability to self create is gone. That was my big thing with him at the trade deadline was he's not going to be all star Gordon Hayward, but he can self create in the secondary role off the bench. We haven't seen that a bit. Like his best moments have been catch and shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I I watched a guy like Sam Hauser who just cooked Oklahoma city tonight. Like Gordon Hayward, it's very small sample size. He's never been this good in his career, but is shooting 51% from three or 54% from three in OKC uh, is a career 37% three point shooter. Like the, the, the great like post prime players in this league tweak their role. I think it's very clear. Gordon Hayward is not a self creation guy anymore. Um, but if he could just be the guy that spots up and knocks down threes, again, to Jacob's point, he's not taking the shots. But if he took five threes a game in the playoffs that were like spot up or um, not like basically not movement threes, I'd be like, yeah, I'm cool with that. But he, he doesn't. It, it, it's the weirdest thing. It, it's so strange. I would love it if you would do that, Nick. I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. I think the biggest impact from that trade and I'm not saying that these two things are related. Uh, correlation does not equal causation. Is Giddy rounding back into form? And I'll be interested to see what they do with the cap space this summer because I think that's the last redeeming thing of that trade is the cap space uh, because right now that move has fallen flat on its face. Granted, I don't think Micic or Trey yeah, Mann would from, play from in the playoffs court production at all. Standpoint, it's fallen flat so, on his face. I don't think there's any way you could say it's a bad trade, given that you're going to get thirty million plus off the books. So. Yeah, right. Depending on what they do with that space, I think that's like an important piece to yeah. this trade. I want to look at the flip side of this coin real quick. Talked about how bad Hayward has looked in two games without the main two guys. I think there's a lot of positives to take. Like Josh Giddy has just had his foot on the gas. Uh, I saw Nick had a couple of tweets tonight about Josh having this newfound confidence and like coming off a screen, getting by a guy and using his size and them on his hip and just bullying guys at the rim. You've seen that a lot. I think mm-hmm. I've thought Jay Will has been an absolute shining beacon in these past two games. Um, Aaron Wiggins has maybe been the guy with the most most juice as far as like creating his own shot. Nick mentioned that earlier. Uh, as far as they, no no guys that can get their own look. I think Aaron Wiggins may have been the best at that. Um, it's been a mixed bag for, for Case and Wallace. The flashes are nice. There's also like tonight, there was a lot of moments of like indecision and turnovers and different things. But I think you've learned a lot about guys that are really going to be able to contribute in the postseason in these past two games and for them not to lay down and just come out and absolutely fight. Like I said, I feel like they should have won that Philly game. I think there's a lot of positives you can take away from these last two. 
totally with you. Is there, is there, before we go to our first break of the night, do our spark of the week in our usual traditions, is there anything else you guys want to discuss about these last, we've kind of been touching about the Sixers game, touching on the Sixers game a little bit also. Is there anything else we wanted to, I think we've given people their flowers that are necessary. Ch- I mean, we can talk about Chet. Yes. I kind of have a, st- a team stat that stood out to me the past two games, more e- even more so. That's kind of been a theme for the season. I've talked a lot about it post-Ulster break on this podcast, but when the Thunder are hitting their three-point shots, they are a dangerous team. And it's no coincidence that in the third quarter uh, against the Celtics here, when they made their comeback, it was Isaiah Joe, Lou Dort, some other players who were hitting outside shots. Last night against the Sixers, they kind of went through a stretch where they were hitting outside shots after being pretty terrible from three for the, the majority of the game. Obviously, it's very different when you don't have your two primary creators in Dub and Shea, as well as two great players who can create their own shots, like Nick kind of alluded to that, and and can hit those outside three-point shots as well and and create those for themselves. But this Thunder team is dangerous when they're hitting those shots from outside. When they're not, they really kind of have to adjust. We saw some of that in the third quarter. I think Jacob, you tweeted that from the count. A lot more cutting, a lot more off-ball movement. They've got to find some consistency there. When those shots aren't falling, it... Play that way from the beginning, you know? And then when those shots do start to fall, that it's a dangerous, dangerous team for an opposing team to have to play in the playoffs. So the three-point shooting continues to stick out to me to be a major theme here, even without Shea and Dub. I think that's fair. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. All right. It's time for the first break of the night. Be right back. And now, as usual, for Wednesdays, it's time for our Spark of the Week segment. Spark joy at Sister Tail Park's family-friendly joint, Spark. Dive into their menu of burgers, bites, and cold delights. Don't skip the must-try Big League City Burger, Jacob. I know know what it is. (laughs) And I want to try it. Pink Fries, Frozen Peach Club Special, and Rotating Custard Flavor of the Month. Located directly west of the Paycom Center, Spark is the best spot to hit before or after a Thunder game. We all know two scoops or even three scoops of custard is better than one, so be on the lookout for Spark number two and three coming to the Chisholm Creek and Nichols Hills area later this spring and summer. Now, we're all going to pick our Spark of the Week. That can be a player, a moment, a concept, an idea that is going to spark this Thunder team this week. Who's going first? I can take it. All right. My spark of the week, I've already mentioned him a few times on this pod, but is Jalen Williams, J. Will. His last two against the 76ers, Mm -hmm. he got the start to match up against uh, noted foul merchant Joel Embiid. That was a joke, but he did. (laughs) Uh, 6.6 rebounds, 12 assists, and a steal. Tonight against the Celtics, uh, J. Will in 15 minutes, seven points, three rebounds, four assists, uh, one of three shooting. Since the All Star break, he is at four points, uh, four rebounds, two assists. We're starting to see more and more and more of J. Will. I've really liked what I've seen. And I think, depending on the playoff matchup, there's a chance in the first round you're going to see 30 minutes a night of J. Will or maybe like five minutes a night of Jay will But I think, especially after these last two, to me, he's just entrenched himself as like a permanent rotation guy on this team. I think he does too many things well to not have him on the court at some point. If they get a Kings matchup, I could see him playing a ton. If they get a Lakers matchup, I could see him playing a ton. If they get a... Dallas Mavericks matchup, which would be awful, I think. Uh, I don't see him playing much at all. Or same thing with like the Golden State Warriors. But Jay Will is my spark of the week. Um, I've just been very impressed with what he's been able to do. Uh, Inconsistent minutes this year, but since the All-Star break has really found a footing in the rotation and I think does a lot of really nice things and offers a wrinkle for this team that they might not have without him. Yeah, it's a great pick. Great pick. I've loved his minutes this year. It's kind of a tempo setter when he comes in. Just keeps the offense and the, and the game plan moving. Keeps everybody moving quickly. Great pick. Great pick. 
I've kind of been thinking about this. I'm curious your all's thoughts as well. The double big lineup. We call it the double big. They aren't true bigs either of J. Will or Chet. But this season's been very effective. I don't have the stats pulled up. We don't need to dive into that right now. But uh, and obviously it, it, that's it's going to look different last night against the Sixers without Dub or Shea. But it seems to me it's a very effective lineup. And we know how uh, strategic Mark is, and he has all this lineup data. And he usually got like, for example, playing Isaiah Joe as much as he has this season with the starters uh, minus Josh Giddy is a good example. I just it seems to me like maybe he's saving that lineup for for the playoffs. He doesn't want to play it too much, show his cards too much. And I just keep thinking about that when I see Jay Will and Chet play so well together in those lineups. And I'm curious your all's thoughts. Is that something we see more of? Again, to Jacob's point, matchup dependent. Do we see more of that in the playoffs if it's the right matchup in the series? I don't know. I mean, I understand the idea of not giving out data. I also don't think Chet and Jay will are like the groundbreaking. You can't beat this lineup. You know, not their um, yeah. say it again. It's not their death lineup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe it, maybe it ends up being who knows. Um, I think if anything, it would be more of like data on what Chet looks like next to a more traditional big, which I don't know if teams care that much. I don't know. Th this team has enough wild cards given they've never played playoff basketball together and half the rotation is either a rookie or has ever played playoff basketball. I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Like there's, there's advantages to like not showing lineups, but at the same time, if you're not showing lineups, you're not playing them and building consistency it's hard to say like, like the thunder is definitely a, an organization that does some crazy unorthodox stuff that works, but I don't, I don't know if this is one. I don't know. All right. I got one. Though. I'll, I'll, I'll go next. I'll go next. Okay. Don't steal my spark, Nick. I'll steal mine either. Nick, Nick. <laughs> All right. Um, Bugs. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> For me, it's turnovers and points and transition. Um, the turnover battle tonight, it's not even the battle, frankly. It's like turning the other team over is Oklahoma City's calling card and then getting out in transition and scoring buckets. Um, on this back-to-back, -back, a lot of it's, you know, Dub and Shea are guys that are really good at generating steals and getting out in transition. Um, they've not been great. Like, I think tonight, Oklahoma City only turned Boston over 11 times, 14 times. And then against the Sixers, it was also less than 20. Like the games where they can turn you over more than 20 times, they're going to beat you more often than not. And I don't know. I just think that the spark of the week this week, giving you're playing a team like the Pacers and the Hornets that are not really good at taking care of the ball or doing anything other than hoisting shots and hoping they go in, especially in Indiana's case. Like they're actually a really good team, but they just hoist a lot of stuff. Turn them over. Like that's that's how you win these games. I think that'll be the spark if they have success. That is a great one and something that actually was brought up on the Bally Sports Podcast with I almost said Nick Gallo, uh Matt Pinto filling in for Fisher uh, alongside Michael Cage. They they brought that up, Nick, uh, especially tonight where there was a pretty big discrepancy there against the Celtics. Taylor, what's your spark? Hopefully it's not the same as mine. <laughs> Well, I thought about just health because I've been tweeting a lot about that. Uh, I even mentioned earlier in the podcast, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see J-Dub and Shea the rest of this week, if you include this upcoming game against the Hornets on Sunday, just to make sure they're 100% healthy uh, heading into the playoffs. But instead, I went with, we've been having a conversation about Gordon Hayward. And I didn't, I, I was hoping none of you guys bring up this other player because I think it, it's kind of connected there. But Aaron Wiggins is my start, spark of the week. Obviously, given a bigger role, he has not been efficient. Uh, for example, I thought last night against the Sixers was probably his better of the two games, and he was still only 5 of 13 from the four. But 5 of 5 from the free throw line, getting to the free throw line, which is much better than many of the players outside of uh, Dub and Shea, had three steals, had a block, also five fouls. I love that. I love that he's being aggressive. He just makes things happen in comparison to the player we talked about, Gordon Hayward, who is literally out there. And I mean, he's my hero for this. Imagine getting paid thirty million plus dollars to just go and run cardio on a basketball court. Sign me up. Yeah, 
but Aaron Wiggins makes things happen every time he's on the floor. And um, I just don't understand. Mark's been fantastic. I cannot speak nearly enough about how great he's been this season. He deserves coach of the year. I'm still so confused as to why he refuses to play or refused to play at Aaron Wiggins more this season. So Aaron Wiggins is my spark of the week. I really hope this stretch without Shea and Dub uh, results in him playing more, getting those Hayward minutes. That's a great one. I think I would shed a, a tear if Gordon Hayward went 5 of 13 in a single game for the Thunder. <laughs> I, get I imagine him throwing up 13 shot attempts. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, tonight, Wiggins was 4 of 11. Again, four not efficient, but I've loved what we've seen in a, in a more prominent role from Wiggins. Uh, my spark, very simple. Taylor, you already said it. It's health. Uh, hey, it'd be cool. Uh, it'd be a nice spark if the two best players played on Friday. You know? Agreed. Do we think they will? That's the question. I think they will. I think really? one of the two will play at least. Yeah. One thing I do want to see, mentioning health, Giddy's been playing so well over the month of March. We've talked so much about that, but we haven't gotten to see that yet with a fully healthy Shea and how that fits. Like, it's really exciting to think about this Giddy, even if he's not putting up the same stats with Shea in the back, but just playing this brand of basketball, being so much more confident. What does that look like with that starting lineup? Uh, I think that's that's really interesting, and I hope we get to see that before the playoffs. All right. That concludes the Spark of the Week segment. We're going to take one more break and then do some take it or leave it. Be right back. Okay. I feel like it's been a little bit since we've done take it or leave it. This one's going to be about the playoffs, kind of. So I'm going to lob these your way. I don't know what order we're going to do this in. I'm just going to say your name and you have to answer. I don't know if you guys have read these in advance or are prepared at all, but here we go. Well, I'm doing it like college. Just do it live. We'll do it live. No prep needed. <laughs> all right. The first one, take it or leave it. We start with you, Jacob. Gordon Hayward will not contribute in a significant way in the playoffs. Take it. What, what's significant mean? He's going to ha have a, an, a notable impact. So you're read, saying, read it one more time. Gordon Hayward will not contribute in a significant way in the playoffs. I think you can take out in a significant way, and I still take it. <laughs> you think he will not playing. contribute in the playoffs? All right, I'm leaving it. I'm very anti Jacob right now. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it takes one game. One. The, the one game is what I was hung up on because I I could see Hayward playing this way for the majority of the playoffs, but having one game in a series where he performs really well at the bench and, and helps the Thunder win a game. Still, I don't think that is uh, what you would consider significant, giving Silva's wording. So I'm, I'm you said significant in a single game? Single in game. Playoffs. In the playoffs. No, no. It, uh, Silva's take it or leave it was not in a single game. I'm just saying I could see it happening what? in one single game. I don't see it happening much more than that. Would you consider that first half against Houston significant? Because I would of 21 games since he's played with OKC since being active. Well, that would be a, if, if that was a playoff game and they would have won that game, uh, that's significant. Like he was 11 points in the first half. It's like one of the leading scorers. He keeps you afloat. Like that's a significant impact when you got to win four games to move on to me. Totally agree. I just. You think that's, that's his been, best game he's going to play in a Thunder uniform? Probably. That's where I'm at. Now. That, that's, that's like, why, and that's why you're saying take it. Yeah. I. It, it's happened once in how many ga games? Taylor 21. I just, I don't see where he has earned the minutes to make a significant impact in a playoff game. I kind of wonder, I've thought about this. Like I've tried to like dissect him psychologically from my couch, which is never a good idea. <laughs> Would not suggest some that. psychoanalysis <laughs> shit going on at the JV yeah, like, household. Was he better in Charlotte? Because you can just kind of fade into the background in Charlotte and do whatever you want. There's no pressure and you know, just kind of do whatever. But now where he is in a pressure, a big pressure situation again, because the thunder are so good. Does he just not know how to channel that anymore? Is it, is it like that Trump video where he's like, turn those lights off, turn them off. And that's <laughs> Gordon Hayward and OKC. Doesn't the lights it's, are right. Like, I don't know. Like, is it, he doesn't want to step on feet 
and he's trying to blend in and he doesn't want to do too much? Is it that he can't do that stuff anymore? Like, I don't know where the line's at. I don't think anybody knows where the line's at. It's been said publicly that the guys are encouraging him to be more aggressive. We haven't seen it. And I'm to the point where I wonder, like, is the ability there anymore? What happened between December and the trade deadline? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure getting traded is a big part of it, but yeah. right. tons and of injury. guys get traded and go to their new place. And at the end of the day, it's just basketball, right? So I don't know. I'm leaving it, though. Yeah. You're taking it. Taking Take it, whatever. It. <laughs> All right, next one. This one's going to go to Nick at first. Isaiah Joe will be the most important bench player in the playoffs. Hmm. I'll take it because the swing of his off and on of being able to knock down threes is so significant. Like if the question is most important, that doesn't necessarily mean like we'll make the biggest impact positively per se. It could also be negative because if an important guy is not performing, you suck. And I think that is Isaiah Joe. If he's, you said off the bench. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I think I would say Dort if it was not, if it was entire roster. Um, but if it's a bench, I think it's Isaiah. Cause if he goes O of six versus three of six, that's obviously nine points. Easy math. But like the whole trajectory of the way that if the defense is actually guarding you and the space you provide for your teammates is just like astronomically different. And I think that he is a humongous piece in the playoffs. Big payday upcoming. If that dude balls out in the playoffs, hot take, he will not be on this team next year. Nick, to tag on to that, if my question, if my take it or leave it was about Isaiah Joe, uh, will he have an impactful a significant impact on a playoff game or whatever. Like I'm, I totally think he will. Like, I think he might be the X factor. Nick, you mentioned going three of six or O of six. I think even if he goes O of six, the spacing that he provides, like teams aren't going to leave him. I think that's super important. And we've seen it the past two games. Mm -hmm. We've actually seen it all season. I think Isaiah Joe has evolved from a specialist to just a really good all around basketball player. Mm -hmm. Even if he goes 0 of 6 in a playoff game from 3, he can still get you 8 points and yeah, 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 5 yeah. rebounds and provide really good defense. Like That's where I'm at with Joe now. And to, to further quantify what I said, 0 of 6 versus 3 of 6, although it does it open stuff for teammates, they're not going to play off of him. But if he's if he's 2 of 4, for example, on the, on the route to 3 to 6, Defenders closing out much harder and putting a hand up much harder. And Isaiah Jonah has the ability to pump fake dribble mid range. Get him in rotation. Like yeah. that's like if you're if you're O of four, your defender may not be closing out as hard. They know you're a good shooter, but you haven't torched them in front of their fan base or your fan. Like, there, there's a personal element. If Isaiah Joe just popped you for two threes in a row, you're closing out hard as shit the next time. Like that, mm -hmm. th th that whole element is not talked about enough. But if he if he knocks down two in a row. You're close to hard. He's pump fake and he's driving. If he's missed two in a row, you're kind of like, eh, you're a good shooter. I'm going to put my hand up. It's, it's a completely different defensive style. I I know we need to move quicker on these. I agree with everything Nick said. I think what you're getting at, Nick, is Isaiah Joe has that flamethrower component where he can enter a game and swing a game and even win a game just based off if he's hitting those outside shots or not while still being that consistent player that Jacob mentioned. The only reason I'm leaving that is because of how excited, how high I am on case and Wallace. I think it's going to be case and interesting. I could see playoff games where Jay, uh, Joe was closing. Like he's one of the yeah. final five guys yeah. on the court yeah. from the four minute point to the end of the game. When you're in an absolute who? freaking dog fight. I think it'll be a lot of games. Over that he's who? closing over who? Josh or over Dort? whoever. Oh. This is a cop out. Whoever it needs to be. If Josh is cooking and Dort's having a bad game, it's I mean, over Dort. We haven't talked about Chet this podcast, but if he Dort has is, had a rough month. He's not playing over Chet in the final four minutes. Like, if they go small and play yeah, J-Dub at the five, I'm kind of worried. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be Shea or Dub, but I think Chet or, or sorry, um, Dort or Giddy, depending on if Dort's five of eight and Giddy can't stay in front of his man, he's going to play over Giddy. If Dort mm -hmm. is 
Oavate and Josh has found a groove, it's going to be he's playing over Dort. Like, not saying every night, but I could see games where Isaiah Joe closes the last five minutes of a close playoff game. Yeah. Totally. All right. His, his clutch percentages are awful for Whistler, yeah. but yeah, he true. did airball a potential game tying <laughs> shot in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Missed a couple of them. Yeah. Could have got revenge. Could have got revenge. No kidding, Silva. That's a huge. I, we didn't talk about that game enough. It was that would have been bad ass. Topics, but that would have that. been that would have been like a topic on this pod. If he oh, did yeah. that, and they won an OT, and then he did the Triple H crop crotch chop and bead <laughs> at the end of the game. I would have got Isaiah Joe's face tattooed on my own. <laughs> All right, uh, this will be a good one for Taylor. Josh Giddy's recent play will translate to the playoffs. And I find this one really hard because I think it's it's yeah. not black or white. It's very gray, uh, per usual, with a lot of these topics. He's not going to put up the same stats that he's been putting up through the month month of March. We aren't going to see these like flirting with triple. Well, I shouldn't say flirting with triple doubles. He's not going to be scoring nearly as much. I see the stats dropping, but I'm actually taking this one. I think the the confidence that he's playing with on both sides of the wall is absolutely going to translate to the block uh, <laughs> translate to the playoffs. And I was tweeting from the podcast account last night. Something I mentioned was it's not just his offense that stood out to me uh, really over this past week, uh, as well as just the month of March in general, but the defense has been much more improved. He's competing much better on that side of the ball. We even saw that some tonight. I think those things are going to translate in the playoffs. So I'm taking this one, even if the stats aren't quite as good, maybe great as they have been over the month, the month of March. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm like overreacting to the month of March also, but I, I'm kind of with you. I think I would, I would also take this even from just looking at the, at the clear mentality change. He was very vocal about this after I forget which game it was. Sounds after. game. Yeah. Uh, where he was like, yeah, I've, I was like anxious before playing against a team that would just not pay attention to me. And you know, I would like, a lot of people would be in that situation when you're so obviously being ignored. Like you have to fight through that in unique ways. And if you mess up, it is like an ex exponential feeling. I imagine an exponentially negative feeling in, in that case. So it's been big of him to fight through that. And I think he's over it and he's passed all those negative feelings on to Gordon Hayward, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> good on Josh. I think teams are going to load up on dub and Shay in the playoffs and try to make anybody else beat you, including Chet. And when they load up on Dub and Shea, or yeah, on Dub and Shea, that means they're bringing extra help. That extra help may come from Giddy. And I think there's going to be a few games where Giddy absolutely eats. I think he is hitting the groove at the right time. I'm going to make my own take it or leave it real quick, Silva. Oh, shit. Yeah. Take it or leave it, Josh Giddy has a 25 point game in the first round. I kind of want to take I kind of want to take that. He's kind of a big game player yeah, a little can bit. Can I add can I add a question slash caveat? Sure. Are dub and Shea both healthy and playing? Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. assuming everyone's healthy and playing. I'm gonna say no because that's gonna take minimum 17 shots. Yeah, I would don't think he's taking the 70 shots. I would leave that too because the playoffs are just a different animal. If this is a regular season, I could totally see that. Um, and again, that doesn't mean that Josh isn't playing well. Um, but I think if he has 25 points, that means Shea and Dub are probably at 20 or under points, and the Thunder probably lose that game. Sounds like again, my thought process was yeah, jo Josh and Dub are getting blitzed or, uh, Shea, and doubled. Shea and Dub. And I think he's I the release and valve. <laughs> And attacking the basket and getting buckets. I'm gonna I think I'm, you lose I'm that taking game my own case. oh take it or leave it, folks. Can you imagine us Docker. having this conversation two months ago? Yeah, it's absolutely great not. point. It's been three weeks ago. Like when you just started to trend yeah. up, you're like, it's only been four games, man. Come on, come on. <laughs> that that would have been the over under three weeks ago would have been instead of twenty five points, it would have been twenty five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. And he's absolutely going to be getting that in the playoffs, I think. Yeah. I mean, I was like, he can't play in the playoffs at all. Now yeah, like, he's getting... playing 35 plus. <laughs> yeah. and, and that, to my point, I'm not saying it's going to happen, 
This is why you don't give up on Gordon Hayward. Yes. My, recent, my recency forward. bias on Jacob is like, I'm not saying Gordon Hayward is going to be this humongous piece, but like all of a sudden when things flip, they flip. And you're like, I can't believe we thought that three weeks ago. Now we think completely differently. Well, here's the problem with that, Nick. When I look inside of Gordon Hayward's eyes from my couch, I see nothing in there. I see no fire, no passion. And from Josh, I do see that. Josh That's is fun. 21. Hayward is 30 plus. Hayward, and, is, um, Hayward is a tranquilized and dog. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Hayward's like, last week I had to take my dog to the vet and she freaks out. So I have to give her like two tranquilizer pills and she gets so messed up. Like she rolls and just falls off the bed and hits the floor. That's where Gordon Hayward is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Getty's like rumbling around in the pain and then like flips his hair. And you're just never going to see that from, from more old Gordo. All right. Who's next? Uh, Jacob, you're next. I'm ready. Aaron Wiggins will become a well known role player, AKA a household name due to his postseason play. I don't know about like household name. But I think people who watch basketball, I've already seen it a little bit. The take is going to come up in the playoffs of, hey, this team needs to go get Aaron Wiggins on their team because he's so good. Yeah. This is the best. Uh, th this is the future sixth man of the Lakers. Like I've already seen someone talk about how the Raptors need to go get Aaron Wiggins this summer. I think we're going to see those conversations. And for that, I will take this. Yeah. You'll, you'll hear. Uh, who's some, some? I don't. I don't want to throw it. Bill in. Simmons is the ultimate. Yeah. Well, I was watching the Thunder yeah. and <laughs> Aaron Wiggins. It, Love him on the Celtics. Aaron Wiggins. It's it's Aaron just crazy Wiggins. how a guy like Taylor Horton Tucker never accomplished a thing in his entire career, but it was untouchable at times. But Aaron Wiggins can actually do stuff, and the world doesn't know about him. It's just it's mm -hmm. just nuts. Yeah. Big market bias, baby. Yeah. Aaron's been awesome. Uh, I think he gets a lot of playoff burn. A lot of playoff burn. I hope so. His, turn his turnaround midi is pretty automatic. Well, yeah, he's and he's maybe him. one of the best at the rim finishers on the team. Yep. Like yeah. his layup package, his ability to get to the basket. If he gets to the rim, it's going in. Like that's kind of where I'm at with him. Or he's his, drawing a foul and finishing through contact. We see that a lot. He's missed two games. Half of the opposing announcers are saying, there goes J-Dub at the rim. Oh, wait, that's Aaron Wiggins. <laughs> like been, over, literally awesome. over and over and over all season long. That's what I've Really? Been. Yeah. Best day I've Wiggins been too busy watching Laney Wilson commercials. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, all right. Last one for Nick. Taylor. We can. I, I should have made an even number here. I, I kind of <laughs> screwed you over here. I, I have another one. We can throw it at the end. Yeah, Great, throw it, Taylor. Please. SGA <laughs> will take five threes per game in the playoffs or more. Per game. Per game. One game. <laughs> Total. <laughs> no, 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 no. Total. <laughs> I meant like. I meant like in a game. Uh, he's gonna average five so three point attempts game. a game, right? Oh, you you did say per game. That's my bad. That's my bad. Um, I don't think so. I think that his three point attempts will go up naturally because you get in the playoffs, it's all ISO. It's, it's, um, take what the defense gives you three point shot for him has been better this year. I think it'll take more. Um, I don't think it'll be five. It's a lot, dude. Five's a lot. How many, how many players in the Thunder attempt five a game? It's a good question. I was going to say so that if we were doing our Dave's hot chicken hot take of the week, I might give you so a hot there. Thunder, Thunder players that attempt more than five a game. Uh, there's only one, <laughs> and he's right at five point zero. Yep, good old Lou Gents. I was going to say is it yeah. Lou. Yeah, <laughs> it's Lou. Yeah, so length. that is crazy. So think think about mm -hmm. how many times in an average game you feel like Lou's doing the hoist scissor kick three now imagine shay doing that many it just didn't feel like shay how is jay dub shooting 43 percent from three in 67 yeah. games jay dub does it's not insane have, What's i know attempts? do you guys know have 3.5 attempts per game for jay dub wow. there's the big lebron jj clip that went out today 
And they said, you know, in a couple of years, I might look at J Dub and be like, man, there's not a there's not a single hole in his game. I couldn't tell you a hole in his game today. Agreed. Like he that does dude everything. is not he's not bad at anything. Yeah, I'm not saying he's elite at everything, but he's not bad at anything. Rebounding is the one place I think he can really improve at. Rebounding and getting to the free throw line. Getting to the free throw line. Oh, those, aren't like, those aren't like, holes. Those aren't holes. That's holes. those are just That's places just of improvement. improvement. He averages four rebounds a game at six five. That's going from mm-hmm. borderline star to like I remember having the same conversation about Shea here three seasons ago on this podcast. Yeah. He needs to get to the line more. And that next season he did. Love J Dub's response to LeBron when he said, I had a hell of a summer. I yeah. think he's gonna have another hell of a summer. I'm really excited. All Final right. take it or leave it for all three of you. Thunder sit at 52 and 24. They are a full game back of the Denver Nuggets, full game back of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, they own the tiebreaker over the Nuggets because they won the season series two to one. The Minnesota Timberwolves tiebreaker is insanely convoluted. Insanely convoluted. They win both. The Thunder will win both tiebreakers? No, the Timberwolves will win both. Division record. And they have it over the Nuggets, and they have it over the Thunder. Yes, but they have one more game. One, the Wolves have against one more divisional Den- game. Against Denver, they yes. do. But- so if the Wolves lose, they are tied divisional record with the Thunder. Which then we conference go to record conference the, the record. Timberwolves have a much better conference record. They got three more games, so I think point, they have more Western point, Conference games. Point being, Timberwolves have the leg up over everybody. Yes. Yes. We are a week and a half away from the end of the regular season. Do the Thunder find themselves in the one seed at any point between now and the end of the regular season? Take it or leave it. Or the take it or leave it will be the Thunder will see themselves in the one spot again before the season is over. Even if they don't end with the one seed, that makes sense. Correct. They just at some point in time they are the one seed in the West before the end of the regular season. I'm just going to go ahead and start it off and say that I'm leaving it because I'm sticking by what I said, and I'm not sure we see both Shea and Dub playing together until after this upcoming Sunday. Oh, All right. I well, Silva ponders over there, uh, oh. makes noises. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, because I think they win their next four. So you're taking it. I'm taking the fact that they <laughs> hold the one seed again, because over those next four that I think you said they'll yeah, win, you a hard time over the over the point of, in time where they win these four. The Nuggets play the Timberwolves. There's a lot of parody there, but I think they lose the last two because I think the Bucks will be fighting off Bucks. Eastern Conference teams. And I think the Mavs will be fighting for postseason positioning. I think the Thunder will not care less. Like there's like when guys to be healthy. Uh I think they'll they'll touch the one seed again. They will not finish in the one seed. Well, those are my thoughts exactly. <laughs> well damn Silva. I know they're gonna yeah. They'll, they'll pretend, be there. pretend you got a different take. I know. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah that no they'll they'll be there for for a for a mere moment an evening. Maybe Make sure you catch a screenshot. Uh, Interesting note in the comments that I did not know from uh, Rashawn Robinson. Three-way tie. The, th- uh, the Thunder wins a three-way tie if the Nuggets beat the Wolves. So you're saying Nuggets fan? You're I Nuggets guess so. Fan. That game's next Wednesday, I believe. It's a big, it's a massive game. Huge. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun to watch. Nuggets have a pretty easy schedule the rest of the way. The Wolves do have, apparently now, the surging Phoenix Suns like two more times before the end of the year. Um, it's going to be interesting. Thunder play Wimby and the Spurs next Wednesday as the... I bet Wimby's sitting by then. Nuggets. Oh, Nuggets uh, Timberwolves is on ESPN. And it's a 9 p.m. tip-off, so we can nice. do our podcast and then catch watch it. Yeah. Um, I bet I bet the Spurs are sitting Wimby by that point. Um, they, already, they already called out... Uh, is it Vassell and Sohan with yeah. injuries? Mm-hmm. So I yeah I bet Wemby sitting that by that point, uh, Nick I think you bring up a really interesting point about the Bucks and the Mavericks to close out the season. They may still be fighting for positioning. The Thunder might still be fighting for positioning as well. But I don't know if they take it as seriously. I, that's I'm, a good. That's I'm, a gr- it's a great point. Up. I would just be interested. Yeah, totally. I, I don't know if they'd fight for one. 
I kind of think you fight for top mm. two just because you get that extra day of rest. Can you fight to play the Kings? Wait, extra day of rest? What do you mean that? What do you mean that? Um, one and two seeds play like there's two days of like game ones of the first round, and the one and two seeds play the the yeah, second I, day. Yeah, because but you're, of the playing games. But you're getting the plans like four days total between end of season or maybe five mm-hmm. days between the end of the season. You get a week. You're, you're, you're getting plenty. Of, I'm almost to what, what's your, what's your line uh, to contradict or the counterpoint. Um, I'm almost of the belief that like too much time off can actually be bad. Like Oklahoma That's city fair. this season's actually been bad on multiple days of rest. Um, they were pretty badass coming out of the all-star break though. They, they were, <laughs> they were, I almost don't want to see six days off after the last game of the season. You know what I mean? Like the, the play is going to be a four day event and you're going to have time off regardless. But also if like, you get the three seed, as soon as the regular season ends, you know who your opponent is and you can start scouting. Whereas they can if scout you're you the too. one or two seed, they can scout you too. Say it again. They no, for sure. For too. sure. But if it's the one or two seed, you're scouting four teams for like four days until somebody starts to lose. Yeah. There's also moment like the momentum piece. You go win a couple of playing games, you're kind of hot. Like I don't know. It's a lot of superstition and, and stuff that probably didn't actually matter, but like that's we're, that's we're, we're all gonna overthink it together here in a couple of weeks. Let's do Folks, it. That's where I'm at. Just get healthy. prescriptions in now. Think about Chet on six days of rest. Good God. <laughs> but on that on that note, 50, 40, um, 90, and that's not a shooting. Score. I'm more excited about that's playoff club. I think we're going to go through comments here in a sec, but I, the, the one that like blew my mind tonight, shout out to Thunder Chick 2010. We like to boast how good the Thunder has been. Since yeah, we do. Inception, and like over the past <laughs> decade, how good they've been. They haven't been past the first round in eight years. It's a long time. That's a That's long time. As and much were you at eight years ago, as much hype, I'll tell you in a sec. As I was in college. <laughs> As much hype as Sam Presti gets for like building these great teams and like tearing them down, rebuilding them, like eight years since getting out of the first round, mm-hmm. that kind of shocked me. Like, I if I had like looked it up, obviously it's right there in front of your face. But like, I had I had like pictured this team as a much more successful postseason team in the last decade. Obviously, the, the, right before that was the Warriors Western Conference Finals, but mm-hmm. holy cow, dude. They were a Ludort three away from making the second round in the bubble. True. Yeah, for sure, True. sure, but they didn't. James Harden block. They didn't. You were in college eight years ago? Yeah. In college seven years Nick ago. Nick and I graduated 2017. JD, where were you at eight years ago? Um, you say high school. I'm kicking you off this. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was in college. I was early college. <laughs> That was in my third year of teaching public education. That was on our third year of pod. No, that was in our. That was before our first year of pod. Yeah, we have never. When we, started. we have never oh. covered a second round playoff series in nope. the existence. That of this is damn crazy. We have never covered an act. No, we have covered home playoff games. I'm sorry. We have never covered yeah. a second round Russ series. We've never. Era. Think about this. We've never had a podcast where Jacob jumps on and says, "What is up?" and welcome the Thunder. Move on. We've never had to it. the second round. We've never had any kind of move on. We had yeah. yeah. So game six, Clay happens. Game seven, they aren't able to come back. Russ MVP year. Then it's well, Russ that's and all PG pre-pod. Mello. That's all pre-pod. And then, well, I know, but Russ PG Mello. Then Russ and PG, they lose to Dame with the goodbye, and the tanking begins. It's a bad shot. Crazy the rebuild. Bad shot. Hey, I also want to give a shout out to Thunder Chick. Uh, I want you to know you are seen, Thunder Chick. I saw your comment the other night. <laughs> She said she is a long time uh, daily Thunder poster. Uh, recently has migrated over to the uncontested stream. That's and awesome. she doesn't appreciate being called a degenerate. Uh, <laughs> as a female degenerate, she wants to be a degenerate. Ooh, okay. I like it. And uh, I, I love that. So, and degenerates. So, Thunder Chick, um, we see your comments. Thank you for hanging out with us. Any other comments we're hitting, guys? Uh, shout out to our guy Kerry. Hung out with him last week. He says, "Where is Spark of the Week?" Hey, Kerry. Oh. The real Spark is the friends we made uh, along the way. Kerry, yeah. I was not there, but I wish I'd have seen you, buddy. I can't wait for summer league. We'll we'll do That's our yearly summer league, our yearly trip. Awesome. 
I'll get a Spe- video of the Speaking of Summer place. League, folks, I, sh- I-, I know it's not Sunday. I know we got another couple of games to go. Don't say it. But it needs to be known that Nick Crane is now within two games of me going into the last week of this <laughs> oh. regular season to win the prediction challenge. I'm at 49. Nick is at 47. We might have. We might have. We had one game different, Nick, and that was that Philly game. I took the one. You took the loss. So look at that. I'm making up ground. This is from last Sunday. Two Sundays ago. Two Sundays ago. Okay. So I'm no longer in last. Not my my (laughs) my request is that we send in the last week of predictions to somebody not named Jacob. That's fair. I'm not saying Jacob's a cheater, but he could very easily. <laughs> I'm gonna cook some... the books. I'm gonna match Nick's prediction. No, so he, I can't he, he, could, he could do the math saying. and say like, if I just match Nick, I can't lose. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Um, or, or we could just agree now that regardless of the outcome, you guys buy my Taco Bell. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or every game the last week of the season is a money ball. Oh. That. let's do that come on come on oh, you know, we include the playoffs. Chat, let us know let us know we're not continuing we'll do it in the playoffs but that's for something new yeah um <laughs> folks in the chat let winning. us know what you think we should do um because nick and i are going to come down to the wire it's pretty fun congratulations on your late push nick i was in first before you Act yeah. like and then I took it like over. Out of nowhere. Hey, and I'm like Jimmy Butler. I just show up for the playoffs. You're you're the playoffs damn Houston Rockets. You, you won like 11 of 12, but you actually <laughs> suck. So here's wow. Your, uh, here's where it's coming. I'm gonna win. <laughs> wow. Uh, where am I at in the standings? Last. You're third, I believe. You're third, but it's like Is a Justin third. last. Yeah, Justin's last. Poor guy. Again, statistics, Holmes. <laughs> when. when when you're a senior vice president, you can afford the losing. <laughs> so, Justin, calling him it. out. Sorry about. I am you. trying to buy a win. I am going to eat so many of those goddamn cinnamon pecans at the arena. You guys are all going to go bankrupt. <laughs> I thought you were going to say milky buns from the. Oh, oh my god! Show. I'm going to be Things slamming so milky good. buns. Be shitting your brains out for. You know how <laughs> the milky bun is kind of like a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna get three milky buns, so I have a milky Big bun Mac. sandwich. Big Mac. So, so the the bed is from from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. Food is covered. Covered. Oh God. No you alcohol. Better, <laughs> you better hope I don't. I win. Oh, right. <laughs> Nick does. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling like 5 a.m. yoga followed by a smoothie followed by. <laughs> so typically the... at summer league, I do we all do lunch on the way over to the arena. Yeah, and then we'll just like snack on arena food. And then we go out for dinner each night. We either go to the Taco Bell ca- Cantina or we go to our own little shitty hole in the wall cantina, cantina. Yeah. Uh, which is incredible. Just it's my so favorite good. spot. Paradise Cantina. Paradise, Paradise Cantina. Paradise. Make Love it wet. It. Make, Make it wet. wet baby. <laughs> and Nick took uh, DP to the Paradise ca- yes. Cantina at like 3 a.m. Like our three first a. night in Vegas. Yes. DP loved it because it's a great place. And then we get some Milky Buns. Um, I won't go we too hard. Like I'll probably just eat my normal stuff plus like one or two extra things if I want. I <laughs> won't. Ham. Humble I won't, man. I won't Humble bust man. your asses. I'll go ham. I don't care. If I win, I'm gonna be buying nine dollar Gatorades at the front <laughs> all day, and that's it. Right. Where? <laughs> at the arena. At the arena. The Gatorades or... are nine dollars. No, I'm sure. I mean, they're up there. Hell, yeah. You know. Jesus. If I win, I'm saving my my free food day from when we go to Best Friend. Yes, oh, so good. We probably should get reservations like now. <laughs> probably <laughs> three months out. Place All right, we it. we've really divulged. Share any other yes. basketball stuff we need to talk about, JD? Hell no, there isn't. <laughs> Come to the watch party on Friday. Do it. Friday. Come get some Dave's hot chicken. <laughs> it's gonna be a blast. Yes, it'll be a blast. Season's almost over, and we're gonna move on to the second round. Eight years, dog. I shocked if we make it the night they clinch the second round the night they win the first round series i want to see like a thousand people in the live stream we might have to do a live pod somewhere like spark we go to the patio after the game i want this place to be freaking stupid insane yeah yeah all right we're almost there get your anxiety medication get your melatonin get ready to go adios 
Thunder up.